Hey, Romain, thanks for running to Macon to Ryder. Hopefully that filter was out front. Um, let me run you through what I'd like you to do tonight if you are feeling well enough and up to it. Ready? Let's go. One, two, and three. All right, I'm going to bounce around a bit. You'll see this is a mess. Don't worry about it. I'll take care of that tomorrow or tonight. So onward. I made a locker for Dietz nuts. So if you've got them labeled up, put them in the box and put them behind the door here. I also have a spot for the hand cleaner. And I think that's all we have. If you find any more, just put it down here, please. Thank you. I've got the dirty dishes with me. I'm gonna run them to the dishwasher, but make sure that there's nothing nasty left in the fridge. There's some pizza for you that's fresh. Um, I came in here a couple days ago and the freezer was left open, so everything melted. But so make sure that's closed whenever you leave. Also the Keurig, if you don't open it, it gets moldy. Ugh. So open it and throw the thing away. So I'd like to bring the seats in, you can put them in here somewhere. I don't think they'll stay long because we'll either throw them away or turn them into some pretty cool retro bar stools, which would be pretty cool. So just get them inside the shop somewhere so they're not in the driveway. I'll get you a cigarette can, but put some gloves on and grab the butts out of there so they're not laying around outside. Let's take a step outside. I got a couple things to show you. Starting with how to organize the propane tanks. Super easy. First off, the key will be hanging on the key board in the break room. Second off, see these are, are ass end out, bottom end out. Those are top out. So the ones that are facing the top towards you, towards me, are full and these are empty, so we always know what's full and what's empty. And these uh, regular uh, vapor propane tanks are full because they're facing this way. But more importantly, notice that these things are facing up. There's an overflow release valve that is, uh, the way it's supposed to go in here is facing down. So always make sure that these are facing up and if they're full, the valve is, is pointing out. If they're empty, flip them around so we know it's time to refill them. And remember to lock the door. That's all right, ready for number two out here. So fold up the tarps so that the guy can mow back here. And it looks like the tent really is maybe seen better days. I think we should just fold it up and pack it up because we'll get a different one out here at some point. And you can get that back inside so it doesn't get all rain soaked, unless it is rain soaked. It, you know, it's good. So you can put that inside. We're almost done. And you remember to do this every time too, so I'm not too worried about it, but I'll make sure that the back door is nice and locked up when you go home. All right, almost done. I'll be taking care of these old filters this week. There's midnight. And you've got your sockets here if you want to get these packed up so that they're in your van or in your toolkit so you don't lose them. And you'll notice that I've got a bit of a mess on the tool bench or on the, on the workbench. Just don't worry about it right now. I'm getting everything organized. I really am going through the shop and we're gonna figure out, uh, we're gonna really simplify and reduce a lot of stuff. So I'm sorting through everything. And so just, this is gonna be a bit of a mess for a couple of days while I get it figured out. So bear with me. As always, make sure that the bottom is open too so it doesn't get funky under there. And that's good, that is open. And once that gets a bit of water in it, just dump it in the sink. Also, I noticed that this is starting to leak air. There's a valve inside here that needs to be worked on. I'll put that on the board so we fix it. But at the end of the night, just to make sure we're not running the air compressor any more than necessary, uh, look behind here and turn this valve off by turning it 90 degrees like that. And if you want this thing to operate properly, you need to turn it on, like such and so. But I'm gonna turn it off right now because it's leaking. I fixed the fan. It was actually bent, so the blades were hitting the casing, and also I think the cord was bad too. But I fixed that up. And the only thing is I bypassed the switch, so in order to turn it on, you'll need to plug it into the extension cord, either that one, just make sure you wind that one back up, or that one, just make sure you wind it back up when you're done so we're not tripping over it. But this fan is working. Just remember, rule number two. I'm getting the uh, 
toolbox all sorted out. I've sent you pictures of these. I'm just looking for this guy. If you've got them, put them back. Um, you've got the sockets in the van. Cleaning up all of these. I made the hammer and pry bar thing much more organized. And drills in bits. Also, the make sure that when we're done using this, I just want to left it on last time, but take the battery, make sure the batteries are on the charger so they're always ready to rock and roll whenever you need to use them. I got this thing straightened out. The camera turn was bad, but I do, I put a new camera in and it's actually working quite nicely. You can take a look at it, but there it is. Uh, the one thing you'll have to do is when you take this out, if you ever do, um, to look at the soot level. The soot level looks like it's getting a little bit high. Maybe we'll have to empty that fairly soon. I would maybe empty it tonight or tomorrow. Just make sure we put this in. Just be careful not to bang into the camera too much because you'll knock it out of alignment. One thing you'll notice is that the camera is focused more towards the back because of just how the, the lens picks up the, the, uh, the upper part. So what you're gonna need to do is when you clean a filter, rotate it so that it brings this hidden area into view so you can blow it out. I think you'll see that it worked quite well. And I can do things like adjust the brightness and exposure and that sort of thing, so that might need to get tweaked based upon your feedback with how easy it is to see the filter while you clean it. Also, the knob came off of the pizza pan that we used to cover that up. So what you'll wanna do when it comes time to shake this thing tonight is put all the rings in so it has the smaller hole and then and then run it. That'll keep the soot from blowing up into the machine too much. And of course, just remember that before you use this thing, I already cleaned this all out, but after it vibrates the next day, get in here, turn on the, the vacuum and just blow out the entire case so that all of that soot kicks up and gets sucked out of there so you're not putting it back on the filter. Don't forget, check the levels so that we don't run out of water. Um, I will, if we do get too low, um, let me run you through the, the process of cleaning this one more time before you do it, and uh, which will probably be tomorrow or the next day. I'm thinking maybe even tomorrow, probably tomorrow. If you need to use some glass cleaner or something to get that off of there so you can fill in the right amount of water, go ahead. Okay, we now have seven Cummins cores, one Detroit, uh, one new customer, Matco. This one needs to get done definitely tonight. And that rider, these are all filled out and ready to go. The Matco DPF and DOC has already been flow tested and weighed. You'll have to open up the rider making Tamplin Boulevard document and put in the flow and the weight before you clean it. So I've got all the filters staged behind me on the stainless steel cart. I moved the chop saw over there so it's out of our way and so these are all cores that really can be done at your leisure i would get as many done as you can tonight uh, but this one is the matco doc matco dpf that does need to get done again that's already been flow tested and weighed it's just ready to go through the process and get into the oven and of course the rider filters from macon i think that's just about it for now wait there's more I'm gonna completely reorganize these shelves. So, what, uh, if you could please, take everything off the shelves. Take everything off the shelves and just put it on the floor anywhere but the shelves. I'm gonna go through everything and get everything back in the shelves in a way that makes sense and will be much more helpful for us. So just take everything off, set it someplace off to the side, and I'll start working on that tomorrow with your help. And once we get the forklift working, which will take a little bit of doing for both of us, or maybe we'll just have a guy come in, we're gonna start moving um, any of the office furniture and things like that that we're not using, stuff that's light. We're gonna go stick it up above in the attic, and um, I'm gonna start shopping for some racking so we can start storing stuff um, against the wall more properly. This is gonna turn out really cool. So any input you have, I'm all ears. Um, you've got good ideas, so feel free to share them. Really appreciate everything you do. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know.